Hello, everybody. Green Effect Podcast live on the air. Scotty is warmed up. We've got episode 18, and we've got probably one of our first podcasts with two big firsts. We got three people on, and we're also live on Instagram. So uh, people on Instagram can definitely probably hear me mainly, but you'll be able to hear uh, Scott and Brian through uh, the audio as well. So we're just kind of hitting it from everywhere today. So <laughs> anyway, our guest. So we have Scotty Henderson uh, from EXP. He is realtor. I'm going to say social media extraordinaire. And I have definitely wanted to have you on here for a while. And uh, we've also brought on Brian Braga from the Financial Collective team, all right? So we're going to have a great conversation here and just chat about what the heck's going on. So, Scotty, welcome to the show, bud. Excited to be here. This is uh, fantastic. Do you know what? You called me social media whatever, but yeah. I've never done an Instagram Live. So this is a first for me, too. This is big. This Hey, listen, a lot of firsts that we got on the show today. So this is big. This is big. <laughs> yes, perfect. Anyway, and Brian, how are you, buddy? I'm great. I'm feeling good today. We're on a, a three-way podcast. I'm feeling pretty stellar. Good, 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 good. All right. So, Scotty, let's get right into it, bud. Listen, no big secret, okay? So you are your realtor. You're here in Waterloo Region. You have come to fame with what I really like about it is it's original. It's a but Thanks. fame, man. I'm telling you, you got the fame thing happening. All right. But it's original. It's new. And social media is a sea of copying stuff. Ask Brian. I'm like, guys, there's no originality anymore out there. Just go copy something. Right. But yeah. talk to me. How did this whole thing come about? There's a lot of parts to that. But uh, honestly, for me, it's funny. I'm, I'm now watching what other people doing are, are doing on social media. But honestly, until about a year ago, part of that originality was I, I tried not to see what other people were doing and try to come up with. <laughs> Did you lose him there as well? Yeah, but you're back yeah. on, bud. You're back on. Right. I know, but I'm on a different camera now. Oh, okay. Let me, how do I, how do I do that? Uh, there should be a uh, ship bottom. Uh, you should, yeah. uh, bike, it's a button that camera. says camera, I believe, and then switch it to whichever one you want. Something might've come loose there. Huh? Well, well all right. We'll put we might this have one down for now. Reel as well. So we'll see. I love it. I'll take it. <laughs> the, those of you right. who are listening and not watching, I don't know why you wouldn't be watching this on YouTube, but uh, those of you who are listening, Scott just had his camera kind of switch over to uh, a different camera and he's back. Yeah. Oh. All right. Okay, perfect. So I was hoping we'd have something a little embarrassing there to see on the other camera. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> no, no, just my ceiling. But um, <laughs> hon honestly, the biggest thing is so when you when you start a new career, right, you you look at the people that are succeeding and you're like, OK, what are they doing? And so I, I was in the event marketing business. I was recruited out of high school to work for a fortune 500 company to like launch brands. Um, it's actually why I went to the university. I did uh, my whole life got turned upside down by, um, you know, opportunities to do marketing for companies. And then it got into events and I was doing all this, like people were hiring me to launch companies and, and launch brands and launch events and venues and nights and things. And because I was coming up with creative ideas and I got into real estate and I forgot all of that. So when I, I got into real estate, I was like, okay, no one's doing any of that. So I shouldn't do that. I should, you know, try to mold myself into this realtor that I thought I should be. And then that was honestly my first six years and my first six years in real estate, I, you know, made enough to live. I had a career, but I was not, I was not being myself at all. So then, um, life, life happens, right? So all of a sudden you get these moments and, uh, I get married and a friend of mine starting this gym and he calls me for this, the, the advice and I'm giving him all this marketing advice. And the funny thing is, is those six years, People still were calling me for marketing advice, but I wasn't doing any of it for myself. 
And my wife just turns to me and says, like, you need to start doing anything you just said to him. Do one of those things and your business is going to change. So I came back and just said, I'm now me. Hired my wedding videographer to be my real estate videographer. Um, and then we started doing videos, started out with educational, then fun educational, and then it grew and then it got into listings. And then here I am now doing what I'm doing now. So oh, that's it. That, and you said something really important there. And you said in the first six years, you weren't being yourself. 100%. And I think sometimes, and, and I talk to our team about this, like whatever you put out there, whether it's with people or whether it's social media or whatever, it's got to be you some way, somehow it's got to be you, right? It has to be. Yeah. I do, uh, yeah. do want to ask here, when you did make the transition over, did you do it like a soft launch or a hard launch into your personality? Did you just straight out bring in the neon, bring in the, the, the cool print or did you, did you slowly <laughs> work it in so your audience wasn't as... Uh, wasn't as shell shocked when uh, when you started uh, being more yourself. Yeah, good good question. Um, I, it was a slow progression. So I started out with these uh, this series called Thinking About Real Estate, and I would do like an everyday task, and then talk about something super serious. But I would do it with with uh, you know smart ass grin on my face, like just <laughs> kind of like satire y but like still very educational. Mm. Um, and that worked well because that's I have a pretty dry sense of humor sometimes and I can be sarcastic. So that worked and people were like, OK, I see what he's doing. But I did get a lot of pushback um, in general. Uh, people were like, hey, you're not taking this seriously. And I was like, I just taught them about like the importance of using mortgage brokers and TDS ratios like and you should call a mortgage broker. Yes, I did it while sipping coffee by a fireplace and being a little goofy, but I still gave them valuable information. So, so who was giving you that feedback though? Who said that? Uh, like other, other people in the industry didn't love it originally. Okay. That, that's yeah. what I was wondering. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, you got that from I, clients, right? But I, no, I, clients loved it. Clients yeah, loved I can it. See and then the realtors kind of throwing mm -hmm. that at, yeah, I get at that the totally. beginning, at the beginning, right? Like, um, and still, I still meet some people that, you know, don't like what I'm doing, but, um, my my opinion is this, and this goes for you, this goes for anybody that's in a public facing job where people are choosing to work with them and you're choosing to work with them, is if you're yourself, isn't it great when someone calls one of you and they've seen you, they know who you are, they want to work with you because they, they've seen your personality? And that was the biggest thing for me because the people that don't like what I'm doing, they don't call me. They're not being like, hey, you know who we need to call? Scotty. I hate him. Right? Like, yeah. They, yeah. I don't get those calls. But the people that understand, they're like, hey, wait a second. This guy is doing marketing and actively pushing out the listings he's selling. So more people know the houses are for sale. I want to call him. Th those are the calls I get. Yeah, got it. And, and, some, and is, that, is, is that how you put it to your clients too? The ones that you are that you know you go to you show up their house, you got to do your yeah. presentation. That's that's how you present it to them. Eh? Yeah. So, well, what, it's funny because I I have gone to some where one partner loves what I'm doing, mm. and the other partner doesn't understand. Mm. So, how, how do you handle that? Love to hear this. It's great because I, 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 I show them my whole process. So, so people that are just seeing the 90 second Instagram reel that's musical, I can understand how they don't fully understand that because uh, it's, they're like, okay, well, how does that sell a house? But I'll tell you how it sells a house. People watch that, and if I can get 100,000 people to watch that, I target ads around that to drive them to the listing. So you put up your house for sale, a couple hundred people are going to stumble on it on Realtor.ca, which is great. Um, they're actively looking on Realtor.ca, but inventory is bigger now. There's more options. So how do you stand out? I'm running ads 
that are driving them to both landing pages of the house and to realtor.ca. So I, I have had to do a listing without a video in the last year and a half. They didn't want people to know that their house, like they didn't want everyone to know oh, their house okay. was for sale. Yeah. That on realtor.ca got, I think it was 1300 views. So that means 1300 people found it. No advertising, anything. When I'm running my ads and I'm building hype around it on realtor.ca, I'm getting three, four times that. So now, okay, so now instead of 1,300 people stumbling on the listing, now there's 4,000 or 5,000. Then I'm having custom landing pages that targeted people are getting sent to from that ad that you don't think is, you know, should be happening, Mr. or Mrs. Seller. Yep. Now it's getting another five or 6,000 people. So instead of 1,000 people fi- looking on Realtor.ca, you have 10,000 people looking through the photos, the floor plans of your staged home that I, I staged it, helped you prep it, price yeah. it. In what scenario do you make more money? Yeah. And after that, they're like, do anything. Do like <laughs> right now. Now all of a sudden, it, now all of a sudden it's like, Okay, you want to jump in my pool? Sure, right? Yeah. Like you want you want to ride a swan down the river in my backyard? Let's do it, right? So, what's really interesting you just said. so so listen, Brian and I we're we, we're marketing too, man. That's what we yeah. do too. We do mark we do the social media thing and videos and and, and yeah. whatever. And what I love what you just said, you 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 got a formula. Like you got, yeah. and I love that you're kind of backing it up with numbers too, right? Here's so much yeah. crap out there. And, but you're, those are all the numbers work. And I think when I hear you have your landing page ready to go, which I have just discovered landing pages through Canva, yeah. like Canva's taken up my life the last three weeks, but um, that's a great way to do it. I, I think gone are the days of, hey, Scott, do you remember this? Uh, what, seven, eight years ago? 500 bucks for a page in Homes Plus and yeah. you hope Edith and, and Ethel read it at the local, you know, yeah. country boy, right? So now... So how do you track it? Target. So, yeah. Yeah, Great so ev- everything is, for me, everything is tracked. So how, how long are they watching it? When do they cut off? Are they sharing it? So I'm tracking shares. So I'm, I'm updating my clients. Hey, we're at 40,000 views. 600 people have shared it. This is how long they're watching it. Out of that, this is how many people have clicked on it, gone to the listing. This is how many people are going through it. These, like, out of these, this is how many showings we have. But the best part about it is, so, I, I don't know. I, 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 I may be uh, the minority uh, thought. This might be an unpopular opinion. But as a realtor, my job, in my opinion, is to make sure the most possible people know that your house is for sale yeah. and I need to be able to prove it right so like so I, I out of that 100,000 people that see your video or 50,000 people how many of that translates to people co- going and looking at the photos how long are they there and there's metrics and there's ways to do that yeah but I, I've never heard any other realtor talk about that <laughs> Yeah. So I, I so I I could be wrong, but like to me, I, I think that's a big deal. I, well, I th- you said here's the thing, and you got to remember this as a as a real estate agent, like, and we we got to wrap our brain around this because as a real estate agent, your job yeah. a represent your client, buyer, yes. seller, whatever, and if yeah. you're selling, ideally, yeah, best price for sure. We always want the most yeah. money, but in the same breath, it's also the best offer. So. Yeah, if you can spread that web as far as you can, because let's face it, uh, Brian. Let me ask you a question. When was the last time you read the newspaper? Honestly, newspaper. a couple of years. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, guess what? Guess what? We got to be a little more original, a little bit more to your point, getting it out there, yeah. right, with some sort of metrics and whatever to really to advertise it and bring in options for the best type of offer for your client, right? Yeah. 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 And everyone has a different strategy. That's just mine. And that's, that's how I can track it. Um, I, I've heard other realtors best practices. I've, I've, I've spoken at a few seminars recently and, and heard some great realtors talk about great things that they do. Um, 
you know, I'm, I'm not saying my strategy is the only way. It's just right. from, from a, a exposure standpoint in, in general, like if you're selling anything, even, even for you guys in your business, um, the more people that know your realtor, sorry, the more people that know that you're mortgage brokers yep. and know what makes you stand out, the bigger the web, the more chance that people will want to work with you. Well, it's the same with houses. Like what are the chances if you, if, if you're selling your house, so what, what city do you live in? What city do you guys live in? I'm Kitchener. You're yeah, Cambridge, I'm Cambridge. Right, yep. Yeah, it's Kitchener and Cambridge. So on your street, if you put a sign on the ground, what are your what are the chances that someone that lives on your street knows the person in all of southwestern Ontario that's going to pay the most money for your house? Right? Yeah. Like, super. Low. I don't even care if you yeah. put like, if I'm listing your house. I don't care if I put a sign up. That sign is to market to the street to be like, hey, I, you know, like. If yeah. you're selling on the street, I've done it before. The sign means nothing to me, right? Like, um, okay, so the sign does have one use. There's one use for the sign. This, I'm going to give you the use. Are you ready? Okay. When you're driving with your wife, yeah, and she is on homes or house or or real whatever all the time. Yeah. You yeah. don't really care what realtor, what we're like, hey, that how, how much, how much, quick, yeah, crazy, quick, check there it out, you phone, go. Check it yes. out phone. That's what the yeah. sign is for. <laughs> yes. Not, yeah. Oh, not yeah. interested it, buyers. We are nosy buyers, nosy people. Oh, if, 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 you, if you live on King Street, Westmount, Weber Street, that sign is important. People are driving by for sure. But if you live on a cul-de-sac, right, yeah. like. People aren't driving by the house, right? Yeah, so, fair enough. It's a target uh, for the kids on the street for getting the ball <laughs> off of or whatever. <laughs> so. Yeah, let, let, let's talk about you. Like, what What's going on in your world? Well, how's, how's mortgages right now? Oh, listen, it's, uh, it, it, it's one of those things where it's consistent. It, it's up yeah. and down. It's like, it's like I feel like I'm, and Brian's probably in the same boat where everyone's working hard. Right. Yeah. Similar to realtors, I'm sure. And everything right now, you just got to work hard for period. Yeah. End of story. Right. And yeah. the business is there. I think yeah. people, people want to know that you know what the hell you're doing. Right. Yeah. I think there's a premium right now. And I'm sure it's the same in, in, in your industry where people who know what they're doing, people who are giving out great information. Right. Brian's had yeah. some great videos come out where he's talking about how to save, whatever. That's the kind of stuff that people are looking for right now. That's what's, that's what's keeping the doors open right now, right? Because uh, it is so up and down, you know? Yeah. Um, never a dull moment, that's for sure. Lots of creativity, so. Yeah, because like in, in Waterloo Region, like we're, the, the total number of transactions is not anything impressive, yeah. right? So like that total number of, of sales weekly is in that, you know, 112, then 130, then, then 120, then 140, then 130. And, and, but inventory is going up. We're getting the 250, 230, 270 a week that are being listed. Now, some of these are being relisted because strategy one didn't work. Um, and now they're trying strategy number two, but like our inventory in the last two months has gone up by over 50 percent so yeah um that's yeah we'll see where things go well we have this home, home inspectors too. are back in business though which is I know. great <laughs> like they're <laughs> slammed right like like they were hurting for a couple of years but they're like yeah they're buying luxury cars now so <laughs> well and you, you asked how things were i'll give you this answer too it's um I, as a as as a mortgage worker i'm really not crazy on balanced market and stuff like that because everyone's putting in financing conditions and stuff like yeah. that. Well, now I got to monitor the clock a little bit and I got to get an answer at a certain time. Everyone's going firm. Ah, we'll get it approved when it gets approved. No rush. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. A little stress with timelines, but that's, that's where our business is now. And, and listen, it's a, it's the right thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. You got to do due diligence on both ends. I'm sure if you're a listing agent, you love a whole bunch of firm approvals, you just take one or um, oh, for firm sure. offers. You just take yeah. one and off you go. But it's probably not the right thing for the consumer, right? No. Um, a little stressful, but uh, yeah, we're dealing with timelines a lot more now. So, how are you doing with, like, are you having issues with insurer 
like insured mortgages where the insure like your your lender will approve it, but the insurer will have an issue. Uh, you know what? Knock on wood. If everyone does it at the same time, no. Um, we are yeah, <laughs> we are very. We're listen. I, I think if an insurer has an issue, it's truly yeah. something you're not expecting, right? And okay. If you are a mortgage agent who knows what to prep for again unless something pops up you are totally not expecting you haven't done your you, you've done your due diligence whatever yeah we don't run into that very much right okay Thank good goodness yeah i i was and, and i think it also comes down to as long as your as long as your brokerage has really good relationships with the lenders normally yeah. they're on top of stuff as well so um, but no, we have, thank goodness, have not Good. run into that just yet. <laughs> I'm sure it's coming, but it, it's more, <laughs> us. We're, we're more dealing with people having rate shock, right? When they yeah. got to go to renew their mortgage. But I will say this, if we're prepping them, if they're at us soon, yeah, that, we can prep them for it, right? Don't wait till the last minute, right? And because and yeah. your clients are going to have this too. Anyone who's bought in the last five years, like they're, yeah. They're coming up now, right? You're going to be well, unless they're time. variable, variable. They've been getting <laughs> hammered for the last five years, right? For the last three years, right? Yeah. So yeah, I, I think a few weeks ago when uh, Tiffy Boy got up there and announced his Bank of Canada rate drop, I, I think I could hear parties as long as the land went in Canada. <laughs> all the variable rate holders, right? They're yeah, and all excited, which they should be. It's been a little bit ouchy the last year and a half. So oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm variable, variable. So. All right. My payments almost doubled, right? Like mm. um, over that period, but um, I got in low. And but um, so for me, it's every every rate drop is is like yeah, saving money, right? Yep. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. It it's funny because that, that Bank of Canada rate drop. Uh, we, Brian and I were talking about this where it didn't it didn't make a whole heck of a lot of difference. It was a little bit, and every little bit counts. Yeah. Totally cool, right? But it just became this marketing thing on social media for oh, everybody, I know. right? I mean, I, at one point, I remember after the announcement happened, I was scrolling down my Instagram, and I swear, other than the ads, nothing else. Oh, Bank yeah. of Canada, Bank Canada, Bank Canada, Bank Canada. Yeah. Like, oh, my God, guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's free yeah, it's social funny. media posts. Yeah. Well, I thought, I honestly, I thought it was going to have a bigger effect, if I'm being 100% honest. I yeah. thought... You know, because the amount of people that, you know, said to me, I'm just waiting to find out, you know, I just want to, I always want to know what, like, once that rate drops, I'm ready to go. You know, and then it didn't do that, right? Like, and I'm watching the sales and we didn't have increased number of sales, right? It was pretty similar. So, yeah, we'll see. I mean, we were actually at the same conference, Stephen. Uh, you know, it was interesting hearing that speaker talk. Where their, their prediction of, of March, like prices are going to absolutely skyrocket. We'll see if they're right, but we were, we were we both heard them talk. It's yeah. just it's so it's so interesting because I was at I was at another conference with CMHC uh, like two weeks before, and you know they were predicting that we were going to have like a ten percent increase in prices for twenty twenty four. But that speaker that we went to last week said that they thought things were going to go down a bit, right? And then skyrocket. <laughs> so, like, you go to, you go to, the, you listen to all these professionals and you're like, okay, well, you know, one what person's hell, saying that it's going to go answer? up by, it's going to go by up by 10 over the next six months. I got to buy today. And then someone else saying it's going to go down and then it's going to skyrocket. So then you're like, well, then I should wait. So. What are you, are you giving anyone advice like right now when they're when they're thinking about buying? We oh, or are you just totally. yeah yeah the the way we the way we word the the advice on whether or not to buy or not. I, I think I said this to a, a group of realtors. We had a meeting. I was at their regular meeting, and, and it was the morning of Bank of Canada announcement. I said, guys, I said I'm going to give you a little bit of a social media hint here. Okay, don't be the guy that goes out there rate drop buy now gotta do it now you're gonna lose out buy now oh my god yeah don't, don't be that guy right be yeah. the information share be the be the yeah. subject matter expert and, and i think what we try to tell people is look at the end of the day 
it's never a perfect time. Rates too high, rates too low, yeah. price too high, price too low, whatever. If you're emotionally ready and you can do it, do it, right? Yeah. It's, would it marry your house, date your rate, whatever, right? Whatever you got to yeah. kind of get yourself, your mind around to do it. It's, there's never a perfect time. Tell me somebody who has timed the market perfectly over the last 10 years all the time and just won. It doesn't I, exist, right? I have one client. <laughs> oh, well, there you it go. Was not, it wasn't on purpose. <laughs> but I, I have mm -hmm. one client that literally, I, it's as if they had a crystal ball. Everything they did. Like they, they sell, they sold, then they waited on purpose and then they bought. Um, and then I have another client that, um, yeah, that just timed, timed the whole beginning of 2022 peak yeah. of the market perfectly. But yes, you're correct. It, it you can't do it on purpose, right? Yeah. But yeah. you, you can lock out for sure. Yeah. Something I, I'll, I'll, Something I say, and this is this is like straight from like the heart. This is not a sales tactic. This is, you know, this is literally like I know what home ownership can do for people's lives. Yeah. And like with first time home buyers, the thing I tell them when they're trying to time the market is I tell them what happened in 2021 i tell them what happened in 2022 and like the difference between the beginning the end of 2021 and the beginning of 2022 was like 30 percent right in like three months like we and then we did fall but like that crazy increase and i just so what i what i say to my first time home buyers is i'm like can you afford the payments yeah right like what you're approved for, have your mortgage broker break down. Does this work for you? And would you rather um, potentially the price go down and you maybe get a smaller mortgage? Or if it goes up and you can no longer afford a, a detached house, like what would you what would you rather have? Right? Yeah. because I've seen it and I've had the the hardest part of my career has been watching houses become unaffordable to great people yeah. like and people that could have bought at some point right so they're you know they're ready to go but they're hesitant and then prices just got out of reach and then they're they're like okay home ownership's never going to be for me so I'm trying to stop that from happening to other people but at the same time I'm, I'm trying not to be pushy because i don't want to push someone into it but like yeah yeah you that guy yeah. right you don't want to be that yeah guy. that's the problem yeah i feel I like what you want i feel like you're describing right. like a wave of discouragement among the pub uh the population and i feel like i've really seen that personally around people my age where they're just looking at the prices just become so high and, and it feels so unattainable uh, and they're just so discouraged to even try now. They're like, why would I save for a down payment if I can't afford it anyways? Or why would I why would I even try to go for a house if I can't even afford a house? Like people are just getting discouraged yeah. out of the market now before they're even attempting to be a homeowner. Yeah. Well, and, and Brian, the one that you when you were on a podcast before, you brought up a really good point. I think the future probably in Kitchener, Waterloo, Cambridge is probably going to be a little bit more condo living. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Single family housing permits are like non-existent, which is a forward leading indicator. That means we're not going to have a lot of single family homes built, right? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, Brian. Where would you build them though? Well, <laughs> yeah. that's a good question, right? Exactly. And so, so Brian, to your, to your point, it's, I think they've tried to really cater that condo living, which has been kind of accepted in Toronto, but they're trying to say, hey, you know what? If you're a first time home buyer get into a high rise condo. Like, why aren't you living there sort of thing? But Brian, you brought up a few really good points as to why that's just not working for, for that generation. Do you remember some of the stuff you said? Yeah. About I, why it's just not working? I remember yeah, like, not. um, everyone, everyone's seen their parents start off their first home being like a, a small bungalow, uh, maybe on the outskirts of the city and you can get the dog right away. You can have your first kids there, but if you're in a one bedroom in a condo, you know, you don't want to have your golden retriever because it's not big enough. You don't want to have your first or your second kid. Like it doesn't, it doesn't feel like enough space compared to what we're seeing our parents have. Um, 
and it just it do, does suck to I guess see uh, the, the comparison of you know your family's starter home when you were younger being like a two bedroom three bedroom bungalow now being like a one or two bedroom condo but it's the cards we're given as well yeah. yeah and even in downtown like they're putting all these condos up in downtown uptown whatever I mean uptown's much more expensive for the most part but downtown Kitchener for example or, or Cambridge um, you also brought up a point like you look at downtown Kitchener it's not even a bloody grocery store anywhere near. So first you might even have a parking spot. It's trying to you can't afford a house and a condo. Yeah. And you got to take a bus somewhere to get your food. Like it's not, it's not the same, yeah. right? It's not the yeah. same, the Toronto living that, that sort of thing. And I get it. it was, Scott, I mean, do you, do you have a sense? I, I'm kind of putting you on the spot here. If you don't know the answer, it's all good. But some of these condos, right? Yeah. What percentage are actually owner occupied and what percentage is rental? I'm assuming probably high rentals. No, a lot of them, a lot of them are bought by investors. So over yeah. the, as the market was increasing, a lot of them were bought by investors with a, a hope to um, assign them. Yeah. Um, Cause it, so the easiest way to explain it is if I buy something today and it's going to be built three years from now, if, if market rate, if market goes up, then, and you would deal with this in the mortgage world. So they get approved, they buy it, they put the down payment down. And then three years later, instead of closing, um, you know, then, then they assign the sale to someone else and say, yeah, I bought it for 350 three years ago, but it's now worth 500. I'll sell it to you for 480 as an assignment. Um, but because of the prices, the way that they've gone, especially in the condo market, so condo market has is very saturated right now. It is the that is definitely a buyer's market um, right now. But what I'm noticing is, so builders, in order to be profitable, they just based on what I'm seeing um, when I look at the prices. The, the new build stuff tends to be around that thousand dollars a square foot. So to get to that five hundred thousand dollar price point on the new builds uh, for a one bedroom condo, they're making it just under five hundred thousand square feet. So instead of making it lower prices, um, in order to build it, in order for it to be profitable, they're still building at that thousand dollars a square foot range. But on the resale market. It's substantially less, so that that's where things are for me are getting interesting because they want to build all these condos, and it makes sense based on population coming in and the amount of people coming into the community and us needing housing for people, which is great. But we're bu- building small one bedroom condos. To to Brian's point, that's not what he wants, right? Um, but then on top of that. You got to buy it at around a thousand dollars a square foot, where you can buy one that's five years old for seven hundred dollars a square foot, right? So, yeah, and most 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 of the people coming into Canada as well, like they're in a lot of cases they're bringing the whole family. There's three, four kids, and then they're going to try to bring mom and dad, which is awesome. That that's how a lot of the a lot of Canada was built back in the day, but they're not going to fit into a one bedroom or a two bedroom, and Listen, the I, I remember the thought always used to be, um, oh, you know what? We'll, we'll we'll build around the tech sector and the Google employees. They're all going to rent these places, and and well, they're not because they all make enough money. They can usually afford their own thing somewhere else. So I haven't seen like a bust of of Google people buying or renting places, right? No, or buying them for that matter. Well, I think I think Brian, an opportunity for you and with with your friends, like from a from a marketing standpoint, but also from uh, just helping people standpoint. Um, I have a few clients that are like currently looking for uh, investment options. Yeah. Um, so and I've had, and, and just with uh, I have some family uh, clients that want mom to live in the basement and things mm-hmm. like that. So, and the pricing there is, there is a little bit of a premium for houses that, opportunity because yeah. affordability is, is where it is um, and it is difficult to be able to afford a mortgage and it's diff- but it's also difficult to afford rent so yeah. um, you know the the workaround so you can have your dog and you can have kids 
the workaround that I'm starting to see a lot of people do is buying these houses even with friends. So I've done a couple deals where two close friends that have been friends for a while both want to get into the market. They buy something outside of both of their individual range, mm. but instead, um, but they get into the market. So now all of a sudden, you know, they're buying an eight fifty thousand dollar house, which sounds crazy. You're like, Scotty, like, uh, you know, we're in our twenties. How do we buy yeah. an eight fifty house? You don't, right? You're buying a four twenty five house, mm. right? You're both buying four twenty five. Right, um, which is better than you buying your one bedroom condo, which costs the same amount of money. You then you then are sharing each you each have your floor. If you're really close, you share a kitchen, then it's even cheaper. Yeah. Right. So if you're sharing a kitchen, but you know, one of you is living in the basement, that's your living room and bedrooms, then you kind of share the kitchen and then the one person has the other living room. Mm. And, and if you're getting along, and the advantage of being in your twenties is you still have friends. Yeah. Right. So like once you get to be like 40, you, you go to some dinner parties, but you're essentially, you know, I, my, my life, I, it, it, yes, I'm wearing neon, you know, uh, I'm having fun, but like I, I'm doing everything I can to, to do as many bedtimes as possible. Yeah. I get excited about going to African lion safari for the weekend. Um, because you know, my kids are going to go nuts for animals. Like, I'm not thinking like, hey, let's go hang hang out with friends because it's Friday night. I'm like, I'm exhausted. I've been taking clients around all week. Oh, it's it's 9 p.m. and no one's calling me? Okay, I'm going to bed, right? But in your 20s, in your early 30s, it's, you know, you still have friends and, and like, yeah. yeah, I think that's the opportunity. And I, and I do see it because whenever I see a sale, I scour the... Uh, I sc scour MLS every day, mm. see what's sold, try to keep my pulse, like a pulse on the market. And the houses that are getting those like, hey, how did it sell for that? Like the little tweak, I like click on the floor plan if they've got one, it should have one. Um, and, I, and I'll and i like go through and I'll be like, oh, this would be perfect for like two families or ah, two I people. See, yeah. And I'm like, that's why it, that's why it sold for 30 grand more than I would have expected. Or yeah. Whatever. But. I think I think that's the opportunity. It's just, but it is hard. Like you, you grew up with, yeah, thinking that, yeah, you go go to school, work hard, get a house. Um, but people that grew up in downtown Toronto did not grow up thinking that. So fair enough. And that's why it works in Toronto, though, too, right? Yeah. And and, and to your point too, like you were talking about the people getting together and and doing it, you know, doing their own. Um, you know, one up, one down, whatever. I've done a couple of those this year. I, I had two families of new Canadians come in. Yeah. And they, they came, they were friends when they were in their, their country. And they bought a side-by-side -side duplex. Perfect, right? Amazing. And you know what? They came with the same down payment, the same everything. And, you know, they're going to be there. Their kids are going to play through their school years and whatever. Um, and I've seen it very successful. So before all the craziness happened, um, I, I did a couple of these back 2015, 2016, where... Yeah. Um, I had one where three people got together, okay, and uh, they did it right. They did a cohabitation agreement. What's our entrance strategy? What's our exit strategy? Smart. That's what you're supposed to do, right? Yeah. Um, and then you know what? It was two guys and a girl, and then the one guy and the girl they actually got together. Then they got out. They sold, followed the exit agreement, all good. And I've done a couple mortgages for them since. I got kids, the whole bit now, right? So. It can be really, it's it's a way to build your real estate wealth if you want to, right? It's, yeah, it's a little bit yeah. awkward and whatever, but whatever, right? You got to get a little creative here. Um, now, I've also had a public service announcement. You know, I have had it where two people got together. Uh, I had one, two guys got together, did not listen, did not get their cohabitation agreement the whole bit. And it was a gong show to get out. So, mm -hmm. so I think as long as you got the right advice, as long as you're doing it right, yeah. It can be incredibly successful and you can move on. You can, you can build that up. And that's what I think we're coming into. I think you use numbers there because you're buying for 800. And I don't know if you exactly put it this way, but it's what I thought where if you're buying for 800 and there's two people getting together, well, really you're kind of buying for 400 each. Oh, well, that's awesome. Why not do it a couple of years and move on? Whatever. It's no big deal. Most people have their income increase as well, right? As yeah. time goes yeah. on. So 
you know, there is a way to do it. It's just, you know, you got to get creative. Work, you know, work with someone like yourself uh, that, that understands that. Work with someone like us that, okay, we're going to do the cohabitation agreement. We're going to do this. Yeah. L- learn from the mistakes that we've seen clients make and set it up properly. Nothing wrong with that at all. And and I, I think the, the tough thing is, is um, people people also, they got in the mentality over over the last little bit of real estate can be a short-term game. Uh, so people were buying even in like 2017, 2018 with like a one-year plan. I'm going to make 50 grand in a mm-hmm. year. I'm going to sell. I'm going to upsize. I'm going to do this. But like I got into this, again, I was a silent realtor that, that uh, you know, was not doing videos and I was being something that I'm not. But I, I so I, I didn't do as many deals back then. But when I got into real estate, it was like five years, right? So like that was the like, okay, we're going to buy this house for, you know, 300000 And then five years from now, hopefully it's worth three fifty, And, you know, then we'll, they'll, we'll move on. But then, you know, it's funny. Everyone talks about the pandemic as this, the crazy time, but, but, but things started getting crazy in like 20, end of 2016, 2017, we started getting multiple offers. Things started to spike, right? Steven started getting firm deals and, uh, right. And being like, how am I going to get these people financing? Uh, um, but I will, right. Yeah, so somehow, some way, <laughs> but from there, right. From, from, from that point on, like people, you know, like, Oh, I'll buy a condo this year, then I'll sell in a year and then I'll, they'll get into a townhouse then I'll sell in a year and I'll buy a detached. But I think now, like if people are making smart decisions, like, we need to go back to that mentality of, okay, this is going to be an investment for five years yes. because the advantage of that is like over a five-year period, if you look at house prices five years ago, we are way more expensive now, right? If you go 10 years ago, we are way more expensive now, right? Like, so in general, over a long enough period of time, real estate goes up. Right, the people that are in trouble are the people that you know bought February of 2022, yeah. and want and need to sell today. Well, the, yeah. the prices aren't as high, but Price will they be as high? And down those those yeah. were tricky, right? Yeah, mm. right. But but eventually they're they're going to be fine. Like how's how's pricing? Like like it's it's gonna like in my opinion, like we're we're gonna continue over a long enough period of time. Right. So I think with real estate too, it became this, I I did a lot of investor mortgages, a lot, like way more than I was doing owner occupied between about 2014 and 2022. And it became this thing where to your point, it was like trading cards, man, like trade them, need them. I I can make a mistake on a rental, sell it because it went up another 20% in six months and boom, my, 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 my sins were forgiven. Right. Yeah. And to your to your point, I think. Listen, the folks about in twenty twenty two with five percent down. Yeah. You know what? A little tricky right now. I get it. But we got to get into the mode of it is a five. That's what it used to be five, six, yeah. seven years. Like yeah, settle into your home. You 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 may you have a home that you are paying down your own equity. There's nothing yeah. wrong with gr- grinning and bearing it for a little mm-hmm. bit long. My wife and I, we did that. Our first house, man, kitchen was in the front of the house. It was the size of a shoebox. Uh, we almost tripped over an oven. Like, it is what it yeah. is. Like, w- whatever, right? And But people don't get that necessarily, right? They don't understand that. And and I think it's, you want to know what most common question I get right now? And talk about blasts from the past. People always ask me, can I buy my next house? So I own a house. Can I buy my house for less than 20% down on my next purchase? They think it's only a first time home buyer thing. But if we go back to the early 2010s, yeah, we did that all the time, right? Yeah. Well, it's new for work. You ported the premium, you ported the rate, you, you played around with it. Yeah. We did it all the time. And, and I had to think about it. I'm like, yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. We used to do that all the time, right? But people don't know that. And because you never had to, we haven't, gosh, when was the last time I did something like that? I'm going to go back 
nine years. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah, because, because well, since 2015, it's now 2014, yep. prices have gone up. You, 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 yeah. your, your, your house would go, you would always go from a default insured mortgage where you, you bought it 5%, price went way up. Your next yep. house was always 20% down or mm. more. Yeah, because you just had it. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. But, you know, we've, we've had that. So, p- again, people ha- we now have to, this is where Brian and I come in when we're trying yeah. to approve these folks. Hey, listen, yeah, you can still do this. We've got to yeah. look big picture. We have lost big picture. We have to coach on that constantly. Right. For sure. And we talk about hopes and dreams. Like I asked, how long are you going to be in this house for? Like, what is your plan? Yeah. Right. And if they say three, four years, I'm like, all right, well, listen, you're buying 5%. Here's the risk here. You know, what do you want to do for yeah. rate, whatever. So it's really trying to have a really good mind mindset shift for, for almost 50, uh, undoing 15 years of you can do no wrong. Yeah. Now we got to prepare, right? I'll give it variable rate mortgage holders. I'll be on any mortgage broker. I'm going to tell you right now, you heard it here first. Any mortgage broker that explained to their clients before 2022 what the hell a trigger rate was is full of shit. You heard it here first. I know I didn't. Why yeah. do we have to worry about trigger rate? The rate's not going to go up 500 basis points in 18 months. That's crazy talk. What are we talking? Right. And here we are. We were all like, what the hell is a trigger? How do we work a trigger rate? Right. Yeah. So now our, that's why people have 40 year mortgages now. Yeah. 40. You hope 50. it's 40. Oh, 60. really? I had, I had, I had a small mortgage segment I had for an investment property I purchased. It was like 91 years. I'm like, RBC, you can have it. <laughs> it's all <laughs> yours. Yeah. But that, but that was the reality, right? That's what happened. So, but the payment stayed the same for most of that, right? Yeah, static. Yeah. Static variable. Absolutely. So, yeah. So that's, yeah. But, hey, when I die, it's all yours, guys. <laughs> um, but uh, now our, our conversations change. Now we're a little more experienced. Now we know what has happened. The, yeah. the, the impossible has <laughs> happened, right? So now we're talking to variable rate mortgage holders before they take it. I ask them this question. I'm like, all right, here's your litmus test if you're going to say yes or no to this. And the question is, if we get to December and Tiff Macklin increases the rate, are you going to be pissed? And if they say no, congratulations, you can have your variable. If they say yes, ooh, let's talk about a fix because that means yeah. you can't tolerate this. But we have yeah. now learned. Because again, the impossible has occurred. Yeah. Right. And that's what our job is, right? To educate. That well, way. It's funny. Like uh, up until um, I, I, part of my, li- part of my like buyer uh, package where I would talk to people about like the process of buying, importance of talking to a mortgage broker, importance of all the different steps, um, getting everything aligned. Uh, I have, I had this graph and, and, and from 2000, Till it was on my it was on my package I used to send people till till recently, but it, from 2000 until 2022, at the beginning of 2022, the graph just looked like this. Mm-hmm. And then in 2008, there's a, a down, a little down, and then it went up by more than that in 2009. So like it's just like this, right? And yeah, we had a couple a couple little things in like 2018. Where they they stopped foreign investment, uh, and and we also had uh, another um, twenty seventeen amortization changes, yeah, amortization changes, and we had another little little dip when they they put in the stress test, but like these were like month dips, mm-hmm. like a few months, and then we went back to normal, then we went up, but like year over year, it was just always like this, and then like the first time it's gone down was was twenty twenty two to to now and then we had a huge spike we actually had a really big spike and surprise more people don't talk about this either but like december of 2023 prices were really low and then we spiked in january and february and then march and then and then we went down in april and now i mean average price technically went up a little bit in may but like we've been pretty stable all year right like up and then little down and then 
So we'll see where this is going. But uh, yeah, what do what's, you, your, do you, what's your prediction? What, what, what's going to happen here? Like, are, so we we've heard all the experts, the non-experts, yeah. the shit on social media. What, what, yeah. what, what's, what's happening here, Scotty? Like, are we, should we be buying houses or should we be selling and moving to the Dominican? What, are we, what should we so be doing? I, so, again, same thing I tell first-time home buyers that I told you earlier. Like, if you can get into the market and you, and you can afford your payments and the money makes sense, to me, it seems like we're lower and there's a lot of inventory. So prices to me feel like a deal. I know they look expensive, but to me compared to what I've seen and, and how I've and how the market's been and how I know it could go back to, to me it seems like it is a good time. Right? Like the the biggest thing though is is affording the payments right so like if 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 you can get in and you're willing to lock in for the five years and you can afford the payments and it doesn't mess up your life i think prices are going to be higher five years from now than they are today so the the thing that scares me always is i i really I seem goofy, like on social media, but I'm very caring about my clients, probably too much. Like I, I really take on their, you know, what they're going through. And I have a few clients that I know I may never be able to help them because they didn't get in when they could have. And like, that's what keeps me up at night. The clients that bought and yeah, prices might be a little cheaper. I know that like three years from now, I'll do the, a crazy video for them. Prices will be higher and we'll get them tons of money and they're going to be in great shape and they'll buy their next house. Yeah, It's the people that miss the opportunity. So for me, yeah, I think, I think, I think prices will go up at some point. I think almost everyone agrees that uh, most people are predicting the big increases are next year, but the variable is 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 how many people need to sell because of their current financial positions based on decisions they made over the last little bit. And and yeah, if we get three thousand, if that seventeen hundred number goes up to three thousand, our price is going down for sure. Yeah. Right. It's interesting because I think what, what's the number? Not nine hundred and one billion dollars in mortgages is up for renewal in the next three years. Yeah, Epic, massive, huge, yeah. and everyone's. Ex- it's a it's a funny one because I think my, my gut tells me we're going to have higher delinquencies. It's going to happen. Are we going full out two thousand and eight U.S. thing? No, I, I don't think so. Because as much as we hated the stress test, as much as we hated it kind of bailed our ass out a little here a little for bit. sure yeah. and we didn't yeah. account for you know people going and buying cars and 900 hundred dollar a month car payments or whatever but and, we're, and what we're seeing now is we're seeing higher household debt like much higher household debt but is that my thought is a you're going to pay your mortgage first and we're seeing it delinquency rates are not skyrocketing they're just not household debt yes delinquencies no and I think what we're going to see, my guess, as these mortgages come up for renewal, we still have a lot of equity, except for a few people that, you know, unfortunately didn't benefit from any timing on their side. We still have a lot of equity and savings in this country. I think what's going to happen, we got some crazy renewals coming up. You're going to renew into a higher rate. Fair enough. But we're also going to be able to wrap in some of the debt into the equity. Mm. Yeah. Prices will go up. And so what we were doing in 2016, 17, 18, 19, when prices were going up, some of the, again, to use this term, some of people, some people's sins will be forgiven because they will wrap some of the debt they're incurring right now into the equity. Yeah. It's going to suck for a bit. Guess what? Can't go out to the movies this week. Eh, sorry. Right. Make your own dinner once in a while. Right. That's going to have to be it. But I think that's what we're going to see and and 
it's going to suck. I get it. It's not going to, it's not going to suck real bad. We're not going back. We're not going to see 08 US. That's no. what I think. Right. Brian, what do you think, man? What, what do you think you're going to see out there? I, I fully agree. I mean, like you're, you're hearing about so many Canadians coming up for, uh, up for renewal and everyone, like I've, I've been cold calling a ton, tons of people. I'm asking when they're up for renewal and everyone's chipper right now. They're like, Oh, I locked in at 1.8. I locked in at 2.5. I'm like, that's amazing to hear, but where are you going to be when you're up for renewal? Like, you know, you're going to be renewing at like three, four or 5%. And then what are we going to do then? So those people are going to give a call back, but uh, I, I really feel that <laughs> uh, when the time comes, they're going to be renewing at a higher rate uh, and it's, and it's going to suck. But I do think the debt consolidation, like we're going to be able to like work around it to be able to get them into a stable position to not hopefully not lose their home. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. And, and I think too, Scotty, the, the other thing I, I and I, I really believe is I want to be careful how I word this. I don't know why I'm being careful, but it's my damn show. But uh, <laughs> I, think, I think the other part of this is what I like for, here's what I like for consumers. All right. And then, and I think this is, this is important. I think people like yourself, you, you said something there and, and it stuck with me. It's like, you know what? Yeah. I'm goofy on air or whatever, but you know what? I actually kind of care about my clients. Like I, Big time. I think that that's important. And I know Brian does. And I know I do. Listen, I'll, I'll walk a client through whatever, like, you know, we'll figure it out. It might not be a great news, but you know what? We'll figure something out. And I think for our industry, what we're going to see is people like yourself, people like me, people like Brian. I think that's going to, this is a good thing for the consumer because I think people like us will be there for them still. We will be able to provide the right services. We'll be the right advice. It's yeah. people like us that are going to be around for a long, long time to be able to get people through this, you know, because I think gone are the days and, and we have this in our industry. I'll, I'll let you talk about your own, but I, listen, I, we, we've got people who probably should not be doing this job. And um, those people will weed themselves out. I think 7,800 mortgage brokers did not renew their license. And I think, you know, this is a good thing for consumers. It, it's a good thing for clients to have this advice. and and know how to maneuver and, and, and actually have their goals and hopes and dreams realized, you know? So I think there's a couple of good things that are going to come out of this. And I don't think it's bad. I don't think any of it's bad from that perspective. I will let you kind of maneuver around how you want to comment on what I just said. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I agree. I think in general, like the, the thing we we all need to remember in in both our industries is like housing is a, is an essential need, right? That costs money, which is tough. Right? Like we're starting out in a tough situation, and to what Brian was saying earlier, um, it was something that was almost a given at one point, and it and it's now not. Right? So we're we're dealing with a tough time and we need to be very very like, sensitive to that with with our clients but like give them advice like their family member is kind of how I approach my business i'm like so i have an older brother awesome older brother he's always been an amazing older brother uh, but i helped him buy a house um, with his wife and, and kids and like I try to like how how would I advise him? Is, you know, is how I try to advise my clients is like, mm -hmm. is this a good move for them? And to be honest, I'm talking, I'm talking people out of more houses than I'm talking them into because um, I do care, and I'm like, look, this doesn't work for you, right? It yes, it has shiny new appliances, and yeah, it's got the kitchen that you wanted, but it has nothing else that you wanted. And like this doesn't work for you, and then and then they think about it, and yeah, I could get a quick sale there, but like, and then I would probably get a, a quick listing too. I mean, technically for my business, it would probably be good to just let them make that mistake. But from a human standpoint, I'd much rather give them advice like a family member, and and I think that I think that is something that people need, and I think that's. I mean, you said seventy eight hundred. We we have seventy thousand realtors between London and Toronto. Like, people got lots of options to yeah. choose. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I don't know. 
but though I mean the downside of caring is you know it affects your your personal life too right so like my wife my wife tells me to care less but I just can't <laughs> turn it off but, but you know what those guys here's the thing and I, I tell these guys this too it's like sometimes the best deal you do is the one you don't do yeah and, and I've had clients where I've said guys let's do this instead let's, let's maybe wait let's do this and then they come back and then we get a deal yeah. done whatever but those people you're not doing the deal right then you're not making your buck I get it yeah they're going to come back to you, right? You did things yeah. right, and they're going to know you cared. But then they're going to become your advocates as well. Yeah, the ones raving that will fans. be your yeah. referral sources, right? And I don't know, man. I got to sleep at night. I don't get enough sleep yeah. to begin with. So whatever I can get, I need to get. And yeah, if it, I, I can't, I can't, I can't. I, I, I you, you said this to you. Like, I'm human, man. Like seriously, I can't. Yeah, I, I, I got to do the right thing yeah. for the client. I got to, I got to be able to sleep. I just, yeah. So. But those, but I think again, it, you said this too. Uh, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of choice, man. There's a lot of choice, right? Yeah. Pick, take your top three things you want from a, a mortgage broker or a realtor, and you can find it. It's there, yeah. right? But how do you? How do you stand out? How do you? You know, and we've talked about marketing and whatever. But this kind of human side, man, it's in. It's freaking important. Like, you know, I think. I think people people want that you know yeah, we're not selling pens. Connection, right <laughs> like no no disrespect to pen sellers but like we're not selling like something that's quick disposable yeah. cheap right like the stuff yeah. that we're dealing with is is life-changing right um majority of the time for the better right which yeah. is good right but there's as we've as we've seen like there's I don't know if you read the Toronto Star article uh, that's saying that there's over a billion dollars in like missed mortgage payments. It came yeah. out like, yeah, like yeah. it's crazy. It's out there. It's out there. Yeah. Like, but that, but that's where that's where people like all of us kind of come in, right? Yeah. I, had, I had a situation this week where a realtor. Um, it wasn't a deal she did. It wasn't a deal that I did. It was uh, very unfortunate stuff happened, and uh, she's like, you know, can we? Uh, unfortunately something's going to be going to power sale right life has yeah. happened to these people they're not bad people just life has yeah. happened right and she's like you know what do we do i'm like you know what give them the best advice you can and get them to the best lawyer we can find and take it from there like life is going to happen they're not yeah. bad people just yeah so anyway wow that okay that was really deep so you know what before we screw this up at all Let's end it there. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. This is good. Um, all right, Scotty, listen, thanks for coming on. I, uh, this was awesome. I, 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 I'll admit, I, sometimes we get these podcasts and, and I, we get to know people on a bit of a deeper level, right? Because we, we start to talk about stuff and, and you post it on social media. It's unscripted, man. I, I don't know where this is going to go. I got seriously like five notes. One of them is your name, so I pronounce it properly. Yeah. And after that, we just kind of see what happens. So I, yeah. I have I have really appreciated getting to know you a little bit better because I think, and I got the same thing. Brian's the same way. We're always on bloody social media and we're doing these damn videos. And, you know, that's only kind of skin deep. And then yeah. once you really get into this, this is where you kind of really understand what someone's about and when you when you talk about and we talked about some tough stuff today like some tough yeah tough situations so thank you very much for coming on um shameless plug how can people reach you and and just check out some of the awesome things you do sure uh pretty much all my stuff and the easiest way to reach me is my website is scotty so s-c-o-t-t-i-e-h dot com um, I'm Realtor Scotty H on both Instagram and Facebook. Check that uh, stuff out. <laughs> that's where a lot of the videos are. So, but yeah, all my information is there. But yeah, that's about it. But I really appreciate you having me on. This is great. I got to learn more about the two of you as well, which is nice. And it's uh, it's funny. The thing about short form content is. Like I try to mix it up. I try to do educational stuff. I try to do fun stuff, but it's still short form, right? So, you know, you by the time you do your hook, so that someone actually will watch it, and then by the time you do, right, like yeah. it's 
it's difficult to really get that full kind of experience. So, um, yeah, I appreciate being here and, um, yeah, getting to know you both better and being able to talk about very important things. Awesome. All right. Well, everybody, thank you very much. We're on Instagram as well and on the podcast. So uh, that's episode 18, season four, as we end all of our podcasts. All right. Because we just can't figure out a better way to do this. Keep fit. Have fun. Only five star reviews. I don't you know, if you know this, Scotty. We, the system doesn't accept four, three, two or one. Crazy stuff. <laughs> five star reviews. Until next time, we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.